And I came to this realization in my own personal life that, well, what am I for though? I know what I'm against and I know what's against me, but what is for me and what am I for? And, and for, for me that had been these personal practices that are uh, health and wellness based, you know, is meditating, is drinking water, it's, you know, uh, going running, it's going to my martial art classes, it's getting some sleep instead of staying up all night, it's, it's uh, counseling, it's therapy to get rid of stress and to shift perspectives, it's listening to motivating audio books instead of some shit that's pain soaked shoot up the block shit you know it was you know it was it was like what am i for and um i think i was i had one foot what i used to say one foot in the streets one foot in the struggle and and i had to really realize like you got to choose you you have to choose um what how you want to live what what's worth living for not just what what you are against in, in your life. And, and so that's what filled that space for me. Welcome to the Mindful Rebel podcast, the podcast where mindfulness and leadership intersect. In this episode, I have the pleasure of chatting with Stick. Stick is an award-winning hip hop artist and producer, one half of the legendary hip hop group, Dead Prez, certified long distance running coach, founder of RBG Fit Club, and an adjunct professor at the Clive Davis Institute at New York University. Dubbed the father of Fit Hop, Stick pioneered the Fit Hop music genre with his groundbreaking albums, The Workout and The Workout 2. His music and lifestyle have inspired millions around the world in personal growth and healthy living. Stick's new book, The Five Principles, A Revolutionary Path to Health, Inner Wealth, and Knowledge of Self, released in October 2022. Welcome to this episode of the Mindful Rebel podcast, man. I'm super excited. Um, I say this quite often on the podcast that I just sort of send emails out as a shot in the dark just to say like, hey, man, I'd love to chat with you. And sometimes the universe says, hey, I'm going to listen and respond. This was one of those instances. This was kind of a dream conversation to have. Um, Stick, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for uh, just taking the time. I've been following your work for a really long time. Um, it's great to see someone that looks <laughs> like me, um, of and in the culture sort of highlighting this healthy lifestyle. And so, you know, I want to say thank you for the work that you're doing and, uh, welcome to the podcast, man. man. Thanks for having me, brother. I appreciate it, man. Mindful Rebel. That's, that's <laughs> about right there. Yeah. Man, I'm glad that resonated with you too. So yeah, that's, it's, it's perfect. Perfect conversation. Yeah. So in order to, to get started, I like to always ground our conversation. And, you know, you have an extensive legendary background um, from the work that you've done as a hip hop artist to a producer to, you know, being a part of their prez to everything that you've done for the culture. Talk about like how your journey evolved to where you are now, um, particularly integrating hip hop and this healthy living um, and the work that you do with Fit Hop. Right on, bro. Um... And thank you for saying that. Um, so the, how I got on I don't, on my healthy gangster, basically, um, in my early 20s, and I talk about this in, in my book, The Five Principles, um, I was living a, a street life. You know what I'm saying? I was smoking, drinking, stressing, eating bullshit foods, so forth. And though I was politically aware and, and activated, and revolutionary organizing and things like that, my personal practices, right, was unhealthy. And um, so with all that drinking, smoking, I woke up one morning in Brooklyn uh, with a swollen ankle and I found out um, it was a condition called gout. Oh. Right? What, what Nas's album, King's Disease, right? This is, this is what gout was known as, the King's Disease, right? And it was from my lifestyle, from smoking, drinking, eating, stressing, all this stuff. And I, that was a fork in the road for me. And in healing naturally, I didn't go the medication route. I went natural with plant-based and, and I discovered like our cultural remedies and stuff. And it, and it, and it turned the light bulb on. 
And and then you know from there, what my friends called me, I became Malcolm Exercise, and <laughs> you know, as you know, just got on that wave. Um, and, and you know, here we are, twenty years later, bro. Um, and, and I've had like literally a revolution, a personal revolution in my wellness, and it's took over my music, took over my my purpose, and it's what I feel like I'm here to do. Help, um, help inspire, um, uh, healthy living in with the works that I do. Yeah, yeah, and you know, you you spoke on something that just like sort of hit a nerve for me in, in a good way but this idea that like you were sort of already activated with the work that you were doing but it's like your lifestyle needed to match that can you talk a little bit more about that and because i know that that's i'm sure um a struggle that we see sort of in the space right like we're we are dedicated to building community we're dedicated to sort of helping to revolutionizing to being active in that way but sometimes our life doesn't always support that and knowing that you sort of met that crossroads where you realized it needed to can you can you talk a little bit more about that revelation well it that it happened on a few levels for me like it happened in my personal life but it also ha happened in my in the musical space and i guess in a, in a nutshell what happened was everything that i had been doing in terms of the movement work so to speak at that time how i saw that was like the things that were against us and the things that we were against, that was the focus, right? Police brutality, the bullshit schools, the, you know, the, the exploitation of capitalism on the jobs, you know, like the, the, all that, the industry trying to pimp the artists, like these were the things we felt like were against us. So all of our focus was on those things. We against that, you know, we bang on the system. We bank pimp against the system, right? Um, and I came to this realization in my own personal life that, well, what am I for though? I know what I'm against and I know what's against me, but what is for me and what am I for? And, and for, for me that had been these personal practices that are, uh, health and wellness based, you know, is meditating, is drinking water, it's, you know, uh, going running. It's going to my martial art classes. It's getting some sleep instead of staying up all night. It's, it's uh, counseling. It's therapy to get rid of stress and to shift perspectives. It's listening to motivating audio books instead of some shit that's pain soaked, shoot up the block shit. You know, it was, you know, it was, it was like, what am I for? And um, I think. I was, I had one foot, what I used to say, one foot in the streets, one foot in the struggle. And, and I had to really realize like, you got to choose, you, you have to choose, um, what, how you want to live, what, what's worth living for, not just what, what you're against in, in your life. And, and so that's what filled that space for me. It was like, the government can be the government, the police going to be the police. But if I sit here and cancer stick myself to death, you know, the enemy don't even got to, they ain't got to do that work. I'm doing it for them with my choices. So I think for me, that was, I realized that the revolution, right, is internal just, just as much, if not even more than it is out here. Wow. Uh, I always say this, and I'm sure my listeners are sick of my ass saying this, but I always say it's like there's always some message that one of my guests share that is like it's hitting home. And I appreciate you sharing that of like being so aware of what, you know, you're against, but like how much do you focus on what you're actually living for? And that that sort of, yeah, got some gears going for me. I'm going to have to journal on that a little bit later today. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. And we tap <laughs> more you know because i really where I, my trajectory uh has been literally 180 degrees and so some of the people who resonated with early young sticky dead press fuck the police you know sometimes say well man how you got on you, you, you know mr meditation you know what i'm saying <laughs> you know like how 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 that how that works so the book i really try to bridge that gap with transparency and just walk people through them steps, you know? 
Yeah, uh, two questions that came from that. One, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to the book in just a second, but was that transition difficult for people that knew you, you know, the previous version of you as you continue to evolve? Was that transition difficult for you know the people that were around you? You know, I, maybe maybe in some small ways, mm-hmm. but honestly, I, I can say I, I really had a community around me that we respect each other enough to be who we are on our journey, where we at, and give each other that space. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the, early on, there, there may have been a, a, a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, you know, like in Minister Society, uh, Sharif, the the guy who's standing on the cooler, mm-hmm. and he's a, on knucklehead, right? And he's he's preaching to the to the crew, and they're like, "Dude, you 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 used to be doing the same thing we doing. What's talking about?" I feel like I, I went through a, a phase of that, right, where I really just wanted the crew and and everybody to like embrace this whole healthy gangster shit and just let's go. And the reality was, we all make we each got a path. We each got a different way we gonna serve. So my path is mine, and my homies definitely have. Um, giving me that space and, and, and allow me to, you know, just grow in that way. And and I think we influence each other even from a distance at times. Mm. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? And then um so yeah, it wasn't I felt supported ultimately, you know what I'm saying? But it, the martial arts training is what really anchored me. Because changing my diet and stuff, that was the first thing. But once I got into Wushu Kwan Kung Fu and many other arts over a 10 year span of time, you have to make choices. Like you can't be high and drunk and then make it to your three hour class and and do that. Like you, it's two different lifestyles. So I always encourage folks, you know, define your fitness because once you find something that is active, that requires you to show up a certain way, it helps you make better choices when you're not in the dojo, when you're not in the gym. Cause you know you gotta show up, and you don't want to suffer, cause cause you're making bad choices. So I just use all of that to keep me keep me focused. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. One of the things I want to ask, you know, as we sort of center back towards the book, I I love asking authors this. You know, what was the sort of aha moment that allowed you to know, like, I got a book that's cooking inside of me, and like, this is what I want to share. Right. Because I'm sure like along your journey, there's been probably so many different points or things that you wanted to share. But what was sort of the sticking point that you said, ah, the five principles, this is what I want to share. OK, so so I, I've written uh, a few other books, but this is the first book that I did with like a book agent and a major publisher and like took it to that level. Right. So my other books had been uh, I, I did a book about MCing. Cause I've been doing that since fifth grade. Um, that was just my process. I, uh, it's called the Art of MCN, if anybody want to know. And then I did a book uh, called Eat Plants, Lift Iron, which was how I gained twenty pounds on a plant based diet. When they say you can't gain weight if you know if you don't eat meat and all this stuff, um, so I did that. So these have been like my experience, experiments, experiences, and things I've been practicing, but. What I realized is that I wanted to communicate uh, the lifestyle that I live, right? Not so specific to lifting weights and eating plants or writing raps, but the overall lifestyle, the journey, right? And as I was talking to uh, Regina Brooks, my my book agent from Serendipity, um, around she was like we need to we, we need to do a book you know you know let's what you what you got what's your ideas and all this stuff and I was like well my journey over the last 20 years I, I picked up these like lessons these affirmations let's turn this off um excuse me and and these are uh, these like lessons have really shaped where I'm trying to go and and as we start ideating on that, you know, we just kind of said, well, let's let's frame that, you know, in a way we can share it. And I have been sharing this for over maybe 12 years with my brand, RBG Fit Club. 
it's founded on these same five principles, but I had never told a story of how these principles came into my life and expounded on them in, you know, a 300 page book. So it was a, it was good, a good challenge and a good platform to really share what I feel like is the healthy gangster philosophy um, and with people. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm excited uh, for you. I mean, uh, you know, as we think about this for my listeners, and your book is sort of right in line with what you know my listeners sort of like to check out. What can they expect from this book? You know, what you know as you sort of crafted your journey and sort of highlighting it through these five principles. What can they expect from from this offering from you? Right on, man. So, well, one, there's the print version, and I also uh, read the audio book. So then. The, the if you want it you want it read to you you know what I'm saying like we we got that version as well and that has its own nuances and music and things of that nature uh but the book in general what I didn't just want to do is tell my I didn't want to just tell my story and there you go you know now you have my my long form bio right I wanted really to make a book that was packed with practices with techniques with tips, with tools, like like actionable takeaway type of book, right? And so I framed my experiences around, uh, so you know real time how I'm learning these things as a student, but you then you get takeaways, then you get recommendations, then you get these suggestions, these tips, these practices to, to maybe apply to your situation, you know what I mean? And, and to be able to use it, so it's a it's a really it's heavy based in practicing being a student that a practitioner of uh, each of these principles uh, mindset nutrition fitness restoration and like consistency self motivation like all those things is just packed with tools and tips in those areas. Wow. Yeah, I mean, listen, <laughs> that it sounds like what's needed. Um, and one of the questions I wanted wanted to ask you, because like as I'm listening to this, of like I appreciate the want to make it very tangible, right? Because I think quite often, especially when we're sort of in the health and wellness space, like there's a lot of like, this is great, this lifestyle is great, but sometimes the helping people connect to that, I think um often is the gap. So I appreciate that there's some like tangibility to getting people sort of understanding this lifestyle and sort of embracing it and embodying it too. You know, and I, I want to ask you, like, how do you stay motivated and do you have any tips around being motivated? Because I think especially with us sort of moving to the end of the year and into the start of a new year, you know, we get a lot of folks that it's like, hey, I'm trying to do something new. I'm trying to start. And we know that like those habits sort of like fall to the wayside sometimes. Um, so do you have any tips on like staying motivated or dedicated to a much more healthy lifestyle? Right on, man. Yeah, there's, in fact, principle number five in the book is dedicated to answering that question in depth on multiple tiers, right? So, but the short answer is consistency. How do you stay, uh, you know, how do you stay consistent? The short answer is you learn to stay inspired, right? And we learn to enjoy the discipline. Right. It's not just about being disciplined. People say, oh, you know, you just got to get off your ass and just be disciplined. Right. OK, that sounds that sounds machismo or whatever. But when you don't feel like it, when you don't feel like doing the thing, then then the whole idea of being disciplined goes out the door. Right. We, we all have done that. Right. So for me, when I look back at the, the young do with a street mentality that woke up with gout in my early 20s and here I am almost 30 years later and I'm still on that path that I got on from that time I'm like what was that how did I do that how am I doing that and so I unpack uh all of the nerd shit that I do uh in studying self-hypnosis and studying psychology uh po what's called positive psychology uh, by uh, this doctor named Seligman. And, um, you know, these are things that I've studied over the years and, and applied and made it practical to my life. Uh, but ultimately, it's knowing how to inspire yourself. And so 
we have people are familiar with the comfort zone right we all have comfort zones and they and they comfort zones because they make us feel comfortable right it's easy it, it, it don't push us it's just where we're at and we know comfort zone we also get stuck in the comfort zone so what i what i talk about in the book is i contrast the comfort zone with the power zone right and so and we we know comfort zone gives you all the things that bring you comfort keep you where you at a power zone is the opposite. A power zone pushes you. A power zone, so learning how to curate a power zone is learning how to know what mentally do I need that inspires me? What uh, nutritionally energizes me? What fitness practices bring me joy? What rest type of uh, restorative practices recharge my battery the best? Um, or what breaks? And wh who are the motivational speakers? What are the books? What are the uh, music, et cetera? What co color sneakers do I need? The, the, you know what I mean? This is curating your power zone. And once you know, we, we walk through certain things like this in the book. So you understand like, oh, this is my superhero shit, right? I know what, I know the recipe to stay inspired. And so I wake up ready to get it. So it's, you know, things like that and, and, and much more that we get into about, you know, being consistent over time. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm excited to kind of crack into that because I know that's an area where, you know, especially when you're speaking about the idea of like comfort zone of like sort of being caught in that rut sort of space, you know, recently of like, man, I need to do something different, but what do I need to do to actually implement? So I'm excited to sort of put that to paper, uh, this idea of sort of cultivating that power zone uh, to sort of help move through that. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, one of the things I wanna, wanna ask you about, and I love asking you folks who are sort of have their rhythm sort of together around this, but like how, like what does your morning look like? Like how do you start the day in a in an aligned way? Because I mm -hmm. think that quite often I get asked this question myself, and, I, you know, for me, I always say, like, I feel like the way you start the day is kind of dictates how the day flows. Um, and so for me, I know, like, the morning is really important to, like, sort of start out in a particular way to sort of get that going. So for you, like, how do you get your day started and how does that affect how it flows for you? Yeah, yeah. Like we say, master the morning on the day, right? So I, um, some years ago, I worked with Toyota uh, on a, what's called the Toyota Green Initiative. And we we round to different uh, gatherings like basketball games and uh, Afro punk festivals and places where young creative Black folks be at. And we would different um, influencers would teach different um, techniques and and practices from a, a holistic space, right? So skincare and different kinds of things. And and one of the things I I was charged to develop was uh, out of my uh, out of my principles. You know what would I want to share? And one of the things I shared was a healthy morning routine. But essentially, there's four four ways to practice a healthy morning: meditate, activate, energize, enterprise. Right. So the meditation, you know, you get up, and for somebody that may be prayer, that somebody that may be meditation somebody that may be uh, silence, you know, certain kind of breathing, shrine work, you know what I mean? Feeding the ancestors, but you that space, that mindful space, right? Give that its moment. Once you meditate, clear the mind, focus, set intentions and things like that, then it's activate. And activate is get the blood pumping. For me, I'm a long distance runner, you know, calisthenics, the gym, those type of things I do in the morning. Other people, you know, may hit some yoga or a, a spin class or whatever it might be, but get activated. The third thing then, after I'm, I'm meditated up, I move my body, I got my blood pumping, then I, I want to nourish myself and hydrate. So that's energized, get energized. So, you know, we eat different kinds of things at different times. You know, we have a craving for this, craving for that. But in the morning, though, it's very important, I feel, to give yourself the highest grade vibration that you can. So if it's coconut water mixed with some aloe, 
and you know hydrating on a cellular level if it's some greens if it's a, a smoothie you know with, that's highly nutritious you know something very nutritional uh in the morning you know after you do this and then finally you got so i said uh meditate activate um energize and then enterprise so enterprise is where we take the top three things on our to-do list that will move the needle forward the most for us on what a particular project or whatever it is the top three most important things and we do that first before the gram before but for entertaining any other kind of stuff, we get that top three things knocked out, right? So the rest of the day, I'm, I'm easy, you know what I mean? So that's that's how I look at the morning. You know, I really strive um, to to adhere to that because it works. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm I'm as I'm listening, I'm like, whew, that. Yeah, I'm I'm just actually excited to sort of integrate some of that. And that's, I think, been one of the struggles for me was I think when you mentioned enterprise, right? Like taking time to like knock something out. Cause I think I I could hit the first three and then it's like, I feel like the day gets past me, but I'm interested in sort of bringing that in. Like, let me just, let me highlight the top three things I need to do and get those done to feel a little bit more lighter about whatever else comes up for the rest of the day. So yeah. thank you for sharing that, yeah. Yeah, man. And, and let me emphasize this too, two things. Mm -hmm. This is a practice, not a perfect, mm -hmm. right? People don't, this is not, nothing in this book, nothing in who I am or anything. It has anything to do with being perfect or, or you know, never, never skipping a day or this or that. Like we humans, we going to, you know, we going to wrestle with our discipline, our focus, our motivation, time, situations, circumstances, change. All kinds of stuff uh, goes on in our lives. But what striving for the five, right, which is how our hashtag, strive for the five, what, what that means is we lean into it with our best intention, right? We have the structure. We, we have these tools. We have these techniques. And when we work them, they work, right? And we have to do that over time to prove that to ourselves. And once you know, like, you can say, oh, meditate. No, no, no. It's, I don't like meditating. I don't, you, we can say that. But once you commit to a, a consistent meditation practice, it, you'll do it because it works, yeah. right? Lowers your anxiety. You might say, I don't want to feel like going to the gym. I don't feel like going to the gym. Okay. But once you go to the gym consistently, the endorphins are going to make you enjoy it. You're going to miss that feeling. You're going to like that sweat. You know what I'm saying? And then the and then the way the ancestors talk to us when we sweat, sweat is a form of libation. And 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 when we pour in that sweat out our pores, they the ancestors pour into us with with encouragement, with insight, with ideas, with solutions and stuff. So, you know, when we go in to get that fitness, we really becoming um channels, better channels, you know, for our purpose. So, you know, we can we can we can. We don't have to be perfect to practice. We just have to be focused. Wow. No, I appreciate you sharing that and putting that into the space because I do think that sometimes that's where we get hung up, right? We, we, you know, maybe for two weeks we were consistent with it and then a day fall, we fall off and then I'm like, well, damn, I'm off track. And then that sort of spirals into this sort of self-deprecating energy where we're like, well, I didn't do it yesterday and I didn't do it today. So I guess I'll just go back to the old routine where it's just realizing like, man, we got to, and I love the, even the hashtag of striving for the five, right? Like it's a continual journey of working towards it. Um, I appreciate you sharing that because I feel like that part needs to be discussed more. Mm -hmm. Right on. You know, I, I want to talk about this idea because of, of like stress management and like balancing that out because, you know, as you mentioned before of being in movement work um, early on and then sort of coming into sort of the health and wellness space around this, you know, do you have any insights for folks that are sort of um, depending on no matter what their role is in movement work? Because we know that that can be a lot of stress that you're sort of taking on as you're sort of pouring back into the community and healing folks, uh, depending on how you do that, of like how we can be better intentional about managing stress. Because I think that we have a lot of folks that are engaged in the space, but then they like are working on fumes or like, you know what I mean? Like not necessarily uh, in a space where they can do the work at a hundred percent because they are sort of 
pouring from a deficit, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, man. In 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 my book, I refer to authors who are experts in that area that I've been studying for a while as I manage my own mind and emotional uh, IQ. And um, I talk about the role stress plays in somebody like myself in my life, you know, go getting all, you know, world traveling, touring, multi-businesses, family, fatherhood, you know, you name it. Um, always in a new hustle, new creative project um, and just managing life and family and this and that. So uh, that's something that we have to change our paradigm around this, even the term stress management. Mm. Uh, Raul Nefer Amin is a, a spiritual teacher and a, a author who wrote the book Medu Netta. And uh, he also has a phenomenal book that, even though we talk about my book, I want to promote his book. It's called Stress Free for Life. Um, and he's, he makes the, uh, the point that managing stress will kill you, right? The, the goal is to eliminate stress, right? And, and to realize that we, that's actually possible. The things that we call stressors, right? Whether it be the job, the government, the police, the this, the grades, the this, whatever. These extra, the, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, your wife, your kids, uh, you know, whatever, the hurricane, you know, whatever it is, these external things that we say that's stressing me is a fallacy. That's, that's, that is not how stress works in the brain or the body. We, right? choose a stress response or not right and in learning that um and then in the dynamics of how to make different choices that are not stress based but are peace based inner peace based that's the technique that's the tool how do we uh detach from the notion that if you do this to me or you to me right that stresses me Right. <laughs> Instead of, you you know, your actions is your actions and my response to it is mine. And uh, that empowerment, that space right there is, uh, I guess somebody could say that's a better way to manage stress. But what you're really doing is eliminating stress. Right. Eliminating the cause of stress, which is essentially an unskillful reaction. To the events and the circumstances in our lives. And once we learn how to skillfully respond to these things, to make a choice, you know, make a choice about how I want to respond and practice that, then stress is not the uh, the gangster, you know, ruling our life as it once was. Now it's just a matter of using the tools to uh, don't ch- don't mean you don't have challenges, don't mean you don't go through shit in life, but it means that you know. Your, your instinct becomes, oh, right? As opposed to, what you say? You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you know, we keep working that and expanding that practice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you. Listen, I'm just sitting here shaking my head like, yes. Yes, because it's like, we forget. I think sometimes we relinquish the fact that we have a choice, right? Like, we just assume that we have to respond in these particular ways, not realizing that, like, Yes, it can be difficult, but there is a choice there, right? Like it's, it's. I think sometimes we let the difficulty sort of supersede the fact that, like, nah, you, there's a. If you pause for a second, mm-hmm. you got choice one, two, and three. We mm-hmm. sometimes just by default go to choice one, but there are other options there if we just sort of slow down and uh, take that space. Yeah. And see, and that for a person that has no mindfulness practice or meditative practice, that's literally impossible. Right. It's like, I don't even, how do you even, I just, all my, as soon as I, 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 it triggers the feeling and I'm already caught up in the feeling and I'm already gone. This is how we, until we have a meditative practice, there's no separation. There is no space. There is no gap between what you feel and your reaction. Right. So that's why, that's where mindfulness and meditation come in because that the whole purpose, one of the key purposes of that is to be able to watch your thoughts 
and but in a detached way. It literally that's what we're doing. Them thoughts is coming, and we learning to breathe through that. You can even watch your feelings, see your feelings. It's okay for this little ten minutes or thirty minutes or five minutes. The whole idea is to be able to sit next to whatever the chatter is and just let it like a cloud, let it move and do what it do without playing with it, without getting caught up in it. And the better we get at that in real time, in real life situations, because that's meditation practice, but the real meditation is in living mindfully, right? And so when we when we in situations, we, we'll we, it'll kick in for us. Our breathe we'll be breathing in and out through our nose and not even realizing it, and that is uh, tapping into the parasympathetic nervous system, mm -hmm. automatically keeping us calm, because we breathe a certain way when we feel certain ways. So all so that meditation practice really is the, the cheat code, um, because it trains your internal shit to respond to life, you know, with from more of a place of grounded balance and then you can choose to do whatever people miss it especially in the movement i feel like sometimes people mistake peace and inner peace as like this call to passiveness or you know somehow we gonna you know we're gonna peace we're gonna you know namaste are are the issues that our community faces in the streets away right and it, and and that's not what it means um you want to just be able to be totally at peace as you pick up this rifle or this or this you know this uh barrel of fruit and carry it here to chill this land you want to be at peace when you're dealing in these different situations just so you can make the best choices and decisions so it don't mean you have to be passive in life it just gives us clarity um, around the choices we make so we can move more effectively. Wow. Yeah, no, I appreciate you saying because that is such a, a common misconception. It's like, no, nah, just because we, you know, with the mindfulness stuff don't mean that it's just, you know, it's all peace with, you know, in terms of, or it, everything has to be passive, right? It's, I'm at peace and I now know how to move more effectively, right? right. Like, don't mean I'm just going to sit here and let whatever fly, but right. now I just know how to move better, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And a lot of times it does equal a peaceful choice, though, you know, because, you know, even in military situations, um, the highest form, they always say the highest form of martial art is fighting without fighting. Right. By the time we got to be in the street shooting each other bullet for bullet, the 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 the, the finesse and the, and the art of managing conflict has been you know we've made we don't miss a million steps if we don't we we busting each other in the face and all this you know like the diplomacy and all of the things that come before it gets to that point is where we want to win at so we do want to make we want to make moves that are effective and powerful that don't even get to the physical aspect of things as much as possible and that's with within our struggles in the community, in our families, right? Yeah. You, know, we, you can't respond to um, conflict with your family with violence. You can't respond to people that you love, your kids, your wife, your husband with, you know, aggression. You know, that, that's not, we, that don't work. So we have to have other ways to, to manage these things. And so it all comes back to, um, what I, the principle number one is mindset matters, you know, and being able, you know, we know black lives matter, you know, Kanye told us white lives matter, <laughs> you know, you know, and, you know to, to any living being, their lives matter, right? But I want to say that even above and beyond the, all those matters, mindset matters, you know, because no matter who you are, how you your perspective is creating your reality so yeah thank you um you know one of the questions i love to ask folks especially like folks like yourself that are like change makers out here like doing the damn thing like how or 
how do you center like moments of like joy for yourself? Like creating, cause you know, I, I, I know like somebody that's heavy in the entrepreneurship space. You know, I know you're around talking about the book, sharing the book, all of these things. I'm sure life is probably really hectic for you. How do you create pockets of like joy and like pleasure and fun for yourself? Yeah, man, that's that's something that requires the same amount of uh, focus and respect on the calendar. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I've literally for the past year, I've I've been uh, really more more than ever focused on developing that aspect. Cause I've been dealing with a lot of changes in my family and whatnot, and uh, so joy and fun is something that we have to sit on the table and say, what does this look like for me, right? Um, so, for, and I talk about this in uh, enjoying the discipline. Uh, what are like hobbies, right? Are, are a great way to, to tap into more joy and, and being able to say, well, what's fun? What am I curious about, right? What is, what uh, can I do that I enjoy that I'm not putting a measurement on it? or this is not for a dollar, or this is not for, you know, some marketing or whatever. This is just living and, and co creating the space to do that. So for me, like, um, archery is one of my, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I'm a, I'm a grindaholic in recovery all the time. So even that, like, I, I, I started doing archery um, about eight years ago, and, and, it's, and it was a hobby that I love, and, it's like golf on some warrior shit, right? But of course I took that, then I became a, a level one, then level two instructor in in archery. And then and then I was like, hey, wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? This was this was supposed to be just my fun hobby thing. And now I, you know, I'm trying to go to the Olympics with this shit. <laughs> um so so I'm I'm very much a student, very much uh an imperfect practitioner. Um, of finding those things with joy and fun. But I spent a lot of time with my youngest son. Uh, he's seven. And he's really the, my seafood of, of happiness. You know, he's my sensei of joy. Because as soon as I get with him, he's like, can we go to trampoline park? Right? And he want to turn backflips. And he want to do that for five hours. And then, you know, can we go to the park? Can we do this? Let's, as long as it's a game, you know, it's a, it's a game. We can be whatever. So um, just being around young kids, I think, is, is a good way to see, like, what joy really is attached to. It's not really things, but it's experiences. And, um, not, and don't care how old we get, not feeling like, um, you know, that play is not necessary. It's necessary to play. You should watch that comedy on Netflix. You should tickle somebody that's a real like serious motherfucker. You should tickle them. You know what I mean? You 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 know play around, man, and like live and let loose. So I'm you know that's something I work on, and I encourage people to you know continue being being light in that way. Yeah, thank you for centering that because yeah, that's I, I'm with you. I, when you had mentioned the fact like starting archery and then like look up and then you're like trained in it and all of that, I immediately thought of myself where photography was that for me, right? Where I, I picked up a camera like 10, 11 years ago, just to like, man, I'm just clicking some photos. And then I look up and it's like, oh, I got a photography business. <laughs> yeah. Now yeah. I wonder why I hate picking up my cameras because I've started to attach this like monetary value and it feels like it got away from me versus something that I was just going around taking photos for me and not posting up for any validation, not posting it up for any money, anything. Yeah. It was it something that got away from me. So it's been something I've been trying to center back in and sort of pull back as a personal practice for myself. So thank you for naming that. Yeah, indeed, man. In, in principle four, I I share a tool uh, that comes out of the holistic health counseling uh, space, and it's called the Wheel of Life. And it's a it's a, a personal like assessment tool that you can use weekly, monthly, yearly um, to identify uh, these areas in your life uh, and find out how they are in proportion to each other, are they balanced or not? 
You know, like you might be on your finance, but you might be slipping in the relationship or vice versa. Or you may be really focused on career, but don't have no social life. Or don't you're not having fun, but you're doing great at what you're studying. And, and it gives you a visual way to say, oh, I want, I want it to be more balanced. So these are the two areas for this period that I need to emphasize more. And then I'll come back and assess where I'm at and adjust. And so using that wheel of life tool is a, is a good way for me that I've found, like I've identified, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm on all cylinders, but when it comes to like just fun and recreation, I'm low in that. And so when I feed into that, because of that knowledge, my life feels that much more balanced and shit just flows and feel more popping. And so that's what we want to be able to do is assess our whole picture and make adjustments as we go. You know? All I'm just hearing is like, if y'all don't pick up this book, y'all crazy because clearly it got all the damn tools you need in it. Uh, <laughs> So yes, please pick up this book. Um, I'm just excited to get my hands on my copy because I'm like, look, I, I feel like I need a, a side journal with it so that I can just sit here and make sure that I'm sort of getting my life together with these five principles, man. I'm super excited. Is there anything else, you know, as we start to close out our time together, um, you know, is there anything else that you'd like to share that you feel like will be beneficial for the, the listeners on the pod? Um, yeah. Man, I just, I guess... Always, I, I just want to encourage uh, folks to that your health is your practice, right? One of the common themes throughout my life, throughout this book, and, and what I truly deeply believe is that we have to make um, the things, these wellness practices, our own. You know, they, they have to fit you. Fitness has to fit you. So it's all about the creativity we bring. Like, you know, like look in sports, you know, uh, there'll be basketball will be something. And, you know, it, it, this is the standard way you play basketball, right? And then what we do, we come along and Jordan and we, and we Kobe and we, you know what I mean? We LeBron in on them and, and inventing and making it our own, right? You know, music was, you know, here are the notes. Ding, 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 ding. And then we come along and we create jazz. And we come along and we create hip hop out of them same notes, right? We make it our own. And so what I want to encourage folks with this wellness space, right? Where we're at in the, in the history of the world, the access we have to all this holistic um, resources, right? don't just don't just take the bland tofu and sit it there you know make it do what it do put your sauce on it you know make it make it something that you can't wait to to be embody and share in our own unique creative cultural ways that is what's going to make it sustainable in our lives when it, we're when it's lit for us so i just want to encourage people to put your put your sauce in in this pot and um and make it yours, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, it's a, we got we definitely got a call to order from Stick. That was a call to that was a call to action. Call to action. Yeah. Just, <laughs> listen, brother, thank you so much for taking the time out. Like I feel like just in our conversation, you put a little battery in my back. Um, um I love when these conversations are motivating for me. Um, that means I know that it's gonna resonate with uh, the folks that are listening to the podcast. Uh, what's the best way for folks to get in contact or uh, touch bases with you with, and follow the work that you're doing? All right, right on, man. Tap in with me on Instagram is my main hub in the social media space. And it's S-T-I-C on Instagram. Um, that's the easiest way, you know, and, you know, I ain't hard to find. You can DM me. Let's connect. Let's work. Let's build. Let's motivate each other. You know what I'm saying? I'm currently uh, doing a few things right now. I'm, I'm working on a, a, a my book tour. So the Strive for the Five series will be coming around in different cities. And it's an interactive, it's not just a book signing, but it's an interactive uh, experience where we bring each of these principles alive in interactive ways. Um, and with a bunch of brand partners, I'm partnered with uh, Deodora uh, uh, on my uh, new running sneaker. 
um, that's available now. And so we, we're going to continue to innovate between the hip hop and the wellness and fitness space. So um, tap in with me on the gram, STIC, and, and let's get it. Stay inspired. Oh, so the link to connect to his Instagram page will be in the description of the podcast. If you click down, no matter what platform you're on, the link will be there, as well as a link to purchase the book. So also click there, make that purchase, make that connection. Um, and yeah, stick. Thank you. Y'all see it here. For those that are watching the video, that's the book. Y'all need to throw it in your cart, get it, whatever you need to do. Um, but it's full of gems. So stick, thank you so much for, you know, taking the time out. I know things are busy, uh, but it means a lot to be in conversation with you. Uh, yeah. Thank you, man. Likewise, man. And I'll share, I, I appreciate the conversation and the good energy you have. And now you got a new listener in me for the, you know, the mindful rebel. So I'll share that with my, my team and my, my crew as well. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Mindful Rebel Podcast. Take a moment to go down into the show notes and follow my guests on all their platforms or check out their website because I know you enjoy the nuggets of wisdom they shared with you in this episode. While you're in the show notes, take a moment and go to my website. That's seanjmore.com to stay up to date on any upcoming offerings I have to share. And then also subscribe on your favorite podcast platform to catch the next episode of the podcast. Thank you so much. And until next time, move into the rest of your day with a greater sense of peace, clarity, and freedom.